This is the Data Download, your guide to upping your game when it comes to managing and accessing data in your organization. For Calibra, I'm your host, Jay Miller. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jay. This is uh, Stan Christians from Calibra, one of uh, the co-founders of the company. That's now 15 years ago. We've been at it for a while. And my uh, current role is the chief data citizen, which is in uh, more commonly known uh, phrases known as the chief data officer at Codibra. I've been here 15 years. You've been here now for the better part of a year, roughly, right? About a year, yeah, a year. When I started speaking with you early 2021, right? Um, The data office was already set up for a bit and we'll get back to that point right away. Um, But when I started to connect with you, I saw in your profile, you've done a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I started to wonder, okay, what got you into data in the first place? Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day, and and it, I don't know if it's a funny story, but I've I've had a, many different careers. Uh, I've been I've been uh, in in several different areas and and all of that. And um, data's always been part of something that I'm doing. And even even in a, a very different career, way long ago, uh, I was helping a friend study for a test on Borland paradox. That was that was my intro to data. I don't know if anybody out there knows what Borland paradox database systems are, but I helped a friend study for that. I didn't know what it was. He had a book, a book with paper. You remember paper? Uh, so so we we were studying together. I was helping him get going on on Borland paradox, and that kind of woke me up to technology. Uh, and at that level, this was again. Before this is this is when the internet was new, uh, and and these things were just all coming to coming into into existence uh, at the time, well before Amazon, well before Google. Uh, so anyway, so that was really the start of of my journey into data. Throughout all the different roles that I've had, network engineering, security engineering, software quality assurance. If you think about it, data was data was key to helping me and the teams I was a part of be successful with whatever those programs were. So if you're a network engineer, you're you're very interested in trends of packet loss on the connections between routers, right? So that you can work with your, your internet providers, right? To, to make sure that uh, they're supporting your connection well. When you're in security, you're analyzing trend data on attacks against your systems. And you're analyzing you know, what types of attacks, where are they coming from? What are the trends on that? So that you can identify patterns. Software quality assurance, that's all about reducing client reported defects, right? And working your your way backwards from that to understand what the common sources and patterns are. Data helps any area of business that you're in, any type of department that you're, that you're a part of, data helps you. Uh, it helps you run your business. And I, I, I woke up to that several years ago and I just wanted to be a part of that story. So I, I, I joined a data team uh, at, uh, at a previous company and, and um, it, off to the races. And that led me, I feel like it's all led to here. If I heard you speak uh, correctly, it's sort of, you know, security, this, that, the other. And in there, you actually saw the need for data just to be able to do that job. And then you realized, okay, this is a bigger thing than just one organization, right? There's a trend in the industry that data is becoming more and more important. Do you have like a, a really nice example of where you, where the light bulb really went on, on, on the value where you saw, okay, data looks, it doesn't look like value. It looks like a, a bunch of letters and, and numbers, right? So how, when did you see it turn into, into value for the first time that aha moment, maybe? It was in, it was in security. Um, it, the 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 light bulb for me was trying to was working with teams that were responsible for building product building software applications i should say right I'll, to be specific you know, working with them as a security person working with with other development teams and addressing let's say security bugs that we may have discovered the light bulb moment was was in in learning about when when is the best time to either address that bug or even prevent it. And I would go to security conferences and I would, I would hear stories of other security departments really struggling with this. They weren't using data. 
they were just complaining that people wouldn't fix the bugs that they found, right? When they were testing uh, applications, right? When they were doing security testing. But what what we were doing in our team was was analyzing when those bugs occurred, at what you know what version uh, was that bug discovered in, et cetera, and then bringing that to the business, right? The the you know understanding the patterns of when that occurred and bringing that back to product owners to help them understand and appreciate that, you know, I've discovered this bug. It affects the, let's say the confidentiality of the application that I care deeply about as the owner. And it helped them have light bulb moments. If I, the owner care about the confidentiality of the data in my application and the security folks have found a security bug that compromises the confidentiality of that data, I better prevent that. So we brought the data that we discovered about vulnerabilities and, and bugs to the product owners. So that was that was a big light bulb moment for me uh, in learning that that connecting data to business. Right. You see the, the it, you literally see the impact on the business, whether it's positive and maybe you're generating more revenue or whether it's negative and, you know, you're risking brand damage or, or worse, right? So you you've, you saw the impact coming from security, seeing that data and taking it to the business and then it became crystal clear. Okay, we need to make some changes here. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, then I would tell that story at security conferences and compare with others that were still complaining about, about their organizations and th- – their, you know, the, the reaction was like, wow, oh, that works. We <laughs> Security people at the time, this goes back a lot, a lot of years at this point, but they just were not used to speaking business to business. They were used to speaking what's called fear, uncertainty, and doubt, FUD. Uh, and, and they just weren't used to it. So it was kind of a wake up call. And I, I felt like we were, we were a little ahead of that game because of data. Uh, and, and that's, that's just, continued on uh, from from then on speak speak business and use data to speak speak to the business more data less complaints and opinions exactly exactly um, I had a question for you Stan before I joined uh, you you began incubating uh, what's what's now the data office here at Calibra um, right so it's been a couple of years and you started small uh, and built up from there uh, which is which is great I'm curious what what was what was going on at the time or what, what led you to want to start a data office at that, at that moment, at that time in, in Calibra's journey? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Jay. And um, it has to, I have to break my brain a little bit up to, to remember it. Um, but indeed, you sort of started with us um, March-ish of last year. And I think we started to create the data office um, around the 2019 timeframe. And then, of course, in the build out, there were some bumps along the road, like all of a sudden a, a pandemic happening, which kept the whole whole world a little bit on pause for uh, some time at least. Um, but essentially, what triggered us to create it? Um, it's a number of things, I, I, I would say. So one, um, our organization, as you know by now, is seeing fast growth still today, right? So. Um, we were sort of going, I don't know, from 200 to 500, 600 people to 800 to today 1,000. So fast growth. And um, obviously, you, at a certain point in time, you, you, you cannot manage the ship anymore the way you used to manage a smaller ship, right? So um, as we became a little bit larger and onboarded more Calibrians daily, systems and processes became more important to us. Uh, and when you say systems and processes, you're also hearing uh, metrics and, and KPIs and data, of course, right? Right. More systems means more data. Exactly. Right. And more people means more data because they're using those systems and doing all sorts of things and having more customer interactions and whatnot. Um, so that's how it um, that's how it got triggered a little bit, I would say. Uh, obviously, we then had to figure out, okay, we're creating a data office now. What does that mean, right? And we'll get back to that soon. Um, but there were some other factors in play. Um, another factor that was in play um, is, uh, okay, I was looking for a role change inside the organization. Like, where do I best focus on that I can add value um, to the organization? 
And we also had uh, a sort of a shift that was happening uh, in the company where we were known from the data governance market leader, thought leader. Some argue we created this market, right, as a software space. And we were saying, okay, data governance doesn't cover everything we do anymore. We have the catalog, we have this, that, the other. So we need to make uh, a, um, we need to make this into a bigger category, which we're calling data intelligence. So we also had that uh, transition or change happening in the organization as our market was also growing. And um, in that sense, we also said, okay, if we set up a data office now, right, because we need it, right, because systems and processes, we'll also have the added benefit, if we do this right, to uh, continue to lead our customers, right, and to continue to lead them in the data intelligence category by putting our out where our money is essentially or um, as some people say on friday evenings we're drinking our own champagne on monday morning some people are talking about eating our own dog food or eating in your own restaurant but essentially let's practice what we preach so these these um, dynamics sort of drove us to create the data office and it's been really helpful and then you start to experience really also what some of your customers experience right because it is true that uh, in gardner's prediction all organizations over time will need to get better at mastering the data asset. So all organizations will have, just like they have a chief financial officer, they will have a data boss or somebody responsible for data and maybe a data office, just like they have finance and HR, let's say. Um, so we saw that trend and then we said, okay, we can actually do this. And the first thing that I then did to help make it a reality was say, okay, if I'm new to this role, and we need to lead the way. Why don't we set out a data strategy for Codebra? And why don't we call it Data Office 2025, right? By 2025, a lot more organizations will have a data office. Um, they'll probably face similar challenges, right? Like figuring out some new processes, uh, dealing with new data technologies as everything is moving into the cloud, but also with new tools for data stakeholders across the business and so on and so forth. So we said, let's call it Data Office 2025, and then we can lead the way as to what we think the Data Office of the future should look like. Mm -hmm.